the recording. Welcome everyone to this meeting of the Community Preservation Act Committee on Thursday, December 14th, 2023. I am calling the meeting to order at 6.04 p.m. Um, <clears throat> we're meeting remotely via Zoom, which is permitted by the town and the state. This meeting is being recorded and will appear on the town of Amherst CPA webpage. Uh, I'm going to call on committee members now to make sure that uh, everyone can be heard and can hear us. Uh, I'm Sam. Uh, Tim. Present. Bob. Here. Matt. Present. Katie. Here. Doug. Present. Michelle. Present. David. Here. Robin. Present. So that's our full committee. Um, we do need to have a meeting, a minute taker for every meeting. Uh, would someone wish to volunteer to do so for this meeting? I can volunteer. Matt, thank you. Um, so uh, I'll get right onto our agenda. The, the first meeting agenda item is to approve any outstanding minutes. Now, we did receive in our packet and earlier in the week minutes from Bob. Uh, I was able to look at them and sent him edits that I had. I'm not sure who else has had an opportunity to look at minutes as of yet. Um, does, does anyone have, uh, I'll open it up to the committee, anyone who has suggested edits to the minutes. Matt. I have a couple of um, minor and one a little bit less minor edit for uh, the December 7th minutes from, Correct. I think that was from Bob. Um, so a couple of minor things. Normally we say at the end of the minutes who wrote the minutes and he didn't. And secondly, on um, the uh, second page, in the review of the financials, he has 1,664,000 K. I don't think it's, if you probably take the three zeros and just leave the K. And then a little bit more, did you get both of those, Bob? Mm -hmm. One more, a little bit more substantial. Um, on the first page, Dave Zymex comment about pickleball. I think he said something about sort of pausing and we the town might come back with a little bit of a different um idea about it. so so you just said in your in your minutes it just says that he met with the many stakeholders which is true and that he's gathering more information which is true but i think he also said um that he's going the town is sort of reconsidering the plan okay Got is it. there a way you'd like to phrase that matt or suggested phrase or dave you? And he may have just joined and not heard you. Um, I mean, we could we could do yeah, that. He probably hasn't seen. I, I I think uh, I think something like uh, the town is reconsidering the plan. Mm -hmm. That works. Okay. Uh, okay, that's it. Others. Any others? I, I don't know if I put it in my edits that I had sent to you early, earlier or not, Bob. Um, under the approval of minutes, the motion passed eight in favor, zero against, and one absent. I don't recall if I put the one absent in or not, but uh, okay. it needs to be a vote of eight, zero, and one absent. Okay. Um, Tim, I had uh, in looking these over. Number one, the chart on the uh, straw poll 
A, I am not necessarily sure we need to include that in the minutes. Uh, and B, if we did, uh, it just lists the numbers of the projects and doesn't list what the title of those projects are. So a reader would have no idea what number four is, say. But I frankly don't think we need to include that detail of all the straw poll results. Uh, so that would be my only comment. We've not included them in years past. Right. Like you could just say the committee undertook a straw vote uh, or something like that, period, <laughs> without all that detail. That would make sense from my perspective. Uh, what do you think about that, Bob? It sounds good to me. Okay. Shorter is better. <clears throat> And it is in the recording, so right, right. It's all there for anyone to see, so that's good. Any other uh, comments to edits? And Sam, you're just speaking about that. There were two sets of minutes, the November thirtieth as well. We're discussing the um, December seventh okay. ones right now uh, because I failed to distinguish between the two and we jumped right into the uh, 30th. So I was referring to the December 7th. I haven't seen the 30th. Has there, anyone else not seen the 30th? No comment. Well, let's let's. I think it was in the first packet, the first. It was. Um, let's, let's complete the, the discussion yeah. on the minutes of December seventh. Yeah. Um, are there any other suggested edits or comments related to the minutes of last week's meeting, December seventh? I move that December seventh minutes with the amendments be approved. Second. We have a motion and we have a second. Uh, is there any discussion? I don't see any discussion. Uh, I'll go ahead for a roll call vote. This is to approve the minutes of December 7th as edited. Uh, I will vote aye. Uh, Bob? Aye. Tim? Aye. Matt? Aye. David? You, can you unmute, unmute your uh, microphone, please? I will abstain. I was not present. Michelle? Aye. Robin? Aye. Katie? Aye. Doug? Uh, this is last week's meeting. I was not present. OK. Uh, so we the motion passes. I assume that's an abstention, Doug. So uh, the motion passes seven in favor, zero opposed, two abstentions. Now there were other minutes. Yes, Tim. David said he was not at the meeting and I'm just looking at the members present. His name is present and not absent. He, he was, David, that was last week. You were with us for the straw poll. <clears throat> but the week before, I think, you were absent. Okay. For the, the December 7 meeting, David was there because he's a part of the mm -hmm. straw poll. I agree with that. Yeah. Okay. You you can still retain your abstention vote, David. There's only, only change it if you wish. All right. So... Uh, by my understanding of the vote, the motion passes with seven in favor, zero opposed, and two abstentions. Um, and thank you, Tim. Uh, the other minutes that have yet to be discussed are minutes of, I believe. November 30. November 30th. Uh, and am I correct that we did not receive those prior to our last meeting? I 
That's correct. We received them in the first packet this week. Okay. So we have not voted on those yet. Um, does anyone have any edits to the minutes of November 30th the meeting? I do recall looking at them and I only found a, like a name spelling edit. I believe I emailed you on that, Katie. Um, other than that, they seemed accurate to me. Uh, does anyone wish to make any comments on the minutes as submitted from November 30th? Um, well, uh, would anyone like to make a motion on the minutes related to November 30th? I move to approve the minutes from November 30th. Is there a second? I'll second that. We have a motion and we have a second. Is there any discussion? I've seen no hands raised. So we have a motion to and a second to approve the minutes of November 30th as submitted. Uh, Proceed to a roll call vote if there's no discussion. I see no discussion. I will vote aye. Uh, Tim? I apologize. I do remember them now, so I will vote aye. Bob? Aye. Matt? Aye. David? Uh, aye. Doug? Aye. Katie? Aye. Robin? Aye. Michelle? Aye. The motion passes eight in favor, zero opposed, one abstention. Okay. Uh, the next item on our agenda is public comment. This is an opportunity for members of the community to uh, have their comments heard by our committee. Uh, we're here to listen. Uh, it's the Community Preservation Act Committee. Uh, if anyone who is attending wishes to make a comment at this time, uh, we welcome your input or comments. Uh, please raise your hand if you wish to. not seen any hands raised from the audience, I will wait another minute. If anyone in the audience, any of the attendees participating at home wish to make a public comment, uh, we're here to listen. Again, I'm not seeing any hands raised. Um, I will close the public comment portion of our agenda. No public comments. So um, we left off at our last meeting with a, uh, after having a discussion of our straw poll ratings for the purposes of getting an idea of discussion on the on the proposals that were before us. And we also recognize that the current volume of funding requested for the existing projects exceeds our available funds. Um, and <clears throat> at this meeting, our next agenda item is to continue to discuss and vote recommendations to the town council. That means we deliberate. Uh, I think it would be helpful, uh, Holly, uh, if you're able to bring the um, spreadsheet onto the screen. I do see a hand raised from uh, Dave Zomack. Uh, Dave, I'd like to call on you if you uh, have something to say. Sure, Sam. I know you're you're gonna you're gonna call up that spreadsheet. Um, 
when the time is appropriate, I just wanted to report out that uh, Holly and I did meet with town staff um, and we wanted to share some of the information that we gathered from those meetings. I think it will have a, a direct bearing on uh, some of the projects that the town has uh, proposed. Holly and I also met with um, the two chairs of the Housing Trust and had a very good discussion. The, the spirit of these conversations were very similar to what happened last year when, when uh, deliberations began and a straw poll, you know, uh, came out with rankings and, and there was a, a need to close the gap. So what staff did was meet with other town staff, and I see Amy Ruzecki is in the audience. I, I'd like to bring her in, or I'd like to ask you to bring her in when, when the time is right to talk about uh, some of these projects. But I also see that one or more of the co-chairs of the Housing Trust are in the audience. So our goal was to try to help you um, both uh, by answering some of the questions you had about the, the proposals from the town and the trust, and also help you um, close that funding gap. So when the time is right, I'd be happy to um, kind of go in more detail on that and uh, just let me know. You're referring to the town submitted proposals? Yes, and also I don't want to speak for the trust because I, I know that Carol and Erica are in the audience, but we did have a very productive conversation with them as well. Well, the uh, where we had uh, questions were raised at the during the discussion of our last meeting, uh, regarding some of the larger dollar amount items and, uh, you know, where and if they might be reduced. It's certainly pertinent to uh, hear of any changes in proposal requested amounts. Um, well, however, however you'd like to go through it, if you'd like to start with the housing proposals, we could start there and work our way through. I imagine members will have questions. But it's it's up to you, Sam. We yep. could also start with the other town projects and my, and work our way through those. My thought was uh, it might make sense if there were, uh, as a starter, if there were any proposals that anyone thought had portions of which were not qualified. That is to say, to start with those that we may not wish to fund and then go project by project. Uh, okay, then then I'll just wait. And when you get to a project, happy to speak to it. That And that could be relatively soon here. Uh, yes, Matt. Yeah, well, given that um, everyone rated project number um, nine, the historic mouse, house move of one out of five, I don't think we're gonna fund that. Uh, I agree. <laughs> uh, I'd like to ask committee members, uh, as with any of our projects, the straw poll rating here is not a firm rating. It, it's a it's there for the purposes of discussions. And I'd like to ask the committee members if anyone has a change in thoughts on the project that Matt just brought up, which is the historic house move. I see that your hand is raised, Robin. I'd like to call on you. Yep. Um, I just want to before uh, my my ranking remains the same. Um, but in terms of where the town and the historical commission and the CPA is going in, in regard to historic private uh private owned historic properties, particularly um home owners, I would like to have some of an uh, I would request that we um, move forward within the next year to create guidelines that establish um, kind of clear reasoning between why a project might be accepted and my, why it might be rejected um, on the basis of significance and urgency and, and I guess availability of funds to the property owner. But I just wanna make sure that our applicants um, uh, understand that um, understand the re that there's clear reasoning behind it so that it doesn't seem arbitrary. And in particular for this house, um, I would say I'm gonna be uh, voting not to fund it, but um, 
that's for this round. I don't necessarily think it's inappropriate uh, for a further round if those guidelines were created and we could um, we could review it more substantially in that regard and, and it, maybe in a year with more available funding. Uh, uh, let me follow up, Robin. Are you referring to historical commission guidelines? No, uh, we just don't have any guide. We don't really have a sense of guidelines on how to um, compare, you know, why would we fund one historic property and not another in terms of understanding what the specific pieces are related to historic significance, how we evaluate urgency, um, just for a, a clearer sense. I mean, I would like to see, I don't think that I can vote for this project to go forward this year, but I don't think that it's um, a no for me that it's not appropriate to fund it. Oh, okay, thank you. Yeah, at present we, uh, review the CPA plan with the eligibility requirements and internal discussion and a commentary. We don't have specific uh, determinations regarding the details of what you're suggesting. Yeah. Um, I think for tonight's meeting, it makes sense to focus on the uh, projects uh, that are before us. And if I understand correctly, you're indicating aside from your uh, uh, thoughts for the future that uh, you're not in support of funding this project and changing the general uh, rating or disposition on it. Um, Tim. Yes, uh, I 100% agree with that. We need criteria. So if in the future we have other private individuals uh, ask for public CPA funds, we need better criteria as to whether yay or nay is not just who decides to make an application. But having said that, uh, I'm going to propose that this committee for this round deny this request, the historic house move number nine in full. So I would suggest we fund it at zero. Uh, thank you, Tim. Uh, Katie. Yeah, I appreciate what um... Robin suggesting, and I, I would just add, and I agree with that we need some sort of criteria, like Tim said, with some guidance around funding privately owned properties with historic value. Um, for the CPA committee, especially since committee members change over time, and it would be just valuable to rely on something like that. I would also add, um, I think Dave mentioned this a couple of weeks ago, but We've toyed around in the three years I've been on the committee with um, what does requiring a preservation restriction mean and look like at what level. And so I would just add add to that as another element of guidance or criteria around funding historic preservation work that would be helpful for us as a committee to define in, in the year going forward. So next year we have that um, to rely on. And I agree with Tim for, for now, um, until we have that guidance, um, not funding this project, but um, potentially that person could apply next time if we have the guidance. Uh, thank you, Katie. Uh, Robin, I see your hand is raised again. Yeah, I just wanted to um, follow up to Katie's comment to say, yeah, I would love to see um, guidance that actually gets that can be provided to the applicants beforehand so that they really see what um, a preservation restriction entails um, at the application point. Um, that it, it might um, it might help clarify whether they want to apply or not. Uh, thank you, Robin. Uh, Michelle? Just to piggyback on that, that's not just specific to the historical content. So for anything probably that needs a conservation restriction um, associated with it. I think that'd be great guidance. Are you indicating, if I understand correctly, Michelle, that there are specific language requirements related to conservation restrictions? Yeah, anything with a restriction that comes along with any kind of application. And uh, forgive me, but uh, is it typical that there are restrictions required for conservation um, applications that relate to uh, conservation? Um, probably Dave Zomek could answer that better, but I think there's um, probably a lot more 
uh, private proponents of historical projects than um, conservation projects, but I think they both have cons like restrictions associated with the projects under the CPAC guidance. Okay. Well, we can we can discuss these uh, these items um, at, in a at a different time. And thank you, Michelle. Um, so it seems, uh, let me let me say it this way, is there anyone on the committee that would desire to provide any funding for proposal number nine, which is the historic house move as submitted this cycle? Is there anyone who would wish to provide funding on the committee? I'm not seeing any hands. Uh, for now, uh, Holly, if we could put a zero in the total amount in column K adjacent to the historic house move on the right hand column where it says total recommended. Oh, it's a dash. Uh, we know a dash is a zero. Thank you. Um, so I asked the committee if there are any projects that we see in front of us that. Um, committee members thought uh, might have issues of meeting the requirements and or that they were certain they didn't want to provide any funding. Um, the historic house move seemed to be a fairly clear one based on the discussion from the other week as well as the votes. Uh, I do have one that I'd like to bring up, um, but it, which is the, uh, I have a question related to the qualifications related to the North South cemeteries, the fencing. Uh, I'm not certain if the fencing related to the North cemetery, the removal of fencing, fencing uh, would qualify under historic preservation um, because it, the portion of the, S, of the proposal as submitted uh, doesn't seem to me to fall within uh, the parameters of historic preservation. Um, the estimate referenced a dollar amount of 50000 for that particular task, uh, with the remaining 100000 being split between the North and South Cemetery for um, <clears throat> uh, repair. So... I just wanted to raise that to the committee. I'm curious if other members have thoughts in what I just said there. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and call on Robin. I see your hand, Dave. Uh, Robin? You can let Dave go first. I'm actually okay. ready to go. Uh, Dave? Um, so I, I would defer to Robin on this, on the historic side, but but I believe we actually have funded fences in the past that were surrounding cemeteries, but not historic. I believe we did that at West Cemetery. Um, but in fact, this is, and this is why I insert, just jumped in a few minutes ago, Sam, staff have discussed many of the proposals, including yeah. the cemetery proposals. And we we have some adjustments to those. And one of them happened to be you, you pick the cemetery was to actually remove the fence side of this and focus on headstone restoration. So it removed the fence and reduced the ask. And I think, you know, we've got five or six of these, maybe more to go yep. through. And I think it would be good context uh, to, to, to kind of go through what staff is proposing and the trust is proposing, because I think we together, um, closed much of the gap that you are facing by reducing some of the asks. So uh, th thank you, Dave. I, I agree with you. I wanted to get that one out because from my perspective, it's a qualification issue as opposed to a funding mm -hmm. issue uh, because it's the removal from my perspective of a fence, uh, which I'm not sure how that is a preservation related uh, expense. But I, I, I thank you for... Uh, your suggestion, Dave, and I agree, I'd be glad to, but before I call on you again to commence with your in, informing our committee, I do see a committee members have their hands back up and I'd like to call on the committee members. First was Robin. Yeah, um, 
since it might even if the fence is removed since it might come up in the following year i think the um the removal of the existing fencing was paired with um replacing it with uh um historically specific um granite markers if i have that right so in that sense it would be a restoration of uh, something historical, so when when bundled together, but I think in this circumstance where we, we were looking at uh, cutting that from from the ask anyway. So, thank you, Robin. Uh, Doug, is your hand? Uh, are you still interested in speaking? Well, I was just going to make a similar argument. If you took, if you if you were restoring a, an existing structure that had some sort of modern, you know, vinyl siding on it, and you wanted to take off the vinyl siding and put wood siding that was stained to the historic period, that would be similar to me as removing a fence that's modern and putting in the historic period fencing. Uh, or or uh, I think it's cement uh, post, but I, I, I hear what you're saying, both of you, and thank you. Um, so uh, if there are no further comments on this, uh, let me ask. Let me ask the committee members: Are there any other of the existing slate of proposals, funding aside, for which the members think there's an issue related to uh, qualifications? That is to say, that um, the projects, you know, they fall within our categories. The town had initially reviewed these before they submitted them to us. Uh, the fence rate you know, raise my antenna, which is why I brought it up. And before we start talking, uh, hearing from the town, I just wanted to continue with the item I brought up. If any of the committee members have anything related to, uh, if they have concerns with any particular projects, uh, qualification under whatever category. Not seeing any hands. So, uh, I'd like to call on you again, Dave, uh, and take you up on your suggestion and your and thank you for uh, volunteering to assist with discussions with town staff at the last meeting. Uh, so I'd like to hear, I'm sure the committee members would like to hear what you have to say. Sure, thanks, Sam. Um, and I think we can go through these fairly quickly. I imagine that committee members may have questions and um, I guess it probably makes sense to start at the top if if it's okay with you, Sam, and bring in Erica and Carol. Um, again, the goal that we set out similar to last year was was to really talk with staff and this and also talk with the trust about our proposals. And we did this, you know, with with some reluctance and and it's it's it was hard work, if you will, to pare some of these down because they, these are, truly needs of the town, uh, but we also recognize the difficult situation that the CPAC is in as you prepare to, to decide on funding and then make those recommendations to the town council. But I think we did it in the spirit of collaboration, cooperation, and uh, some of these proposals or parts of them may come back in future years. And why don't we start with the two housing proposals? I will just say that on the town side, um, before Carol and, and Erica speak, um, uh, we met with with Holly Drake and um, uh, Nate Malloy, who does a lot of our um, affordable housing projects and planning. And we determined that we could reduce the town's ask from 275 this year to 150. And that would still um, give us enough room to work um, uh, with the projects that we have in the pipeline. So um, again, that's from two fifth, uh, excuse me, two seventy five to one fifty, and uh, I would I would then look to, uh, since it's a, you know, since we collaborate with the trust, I guess I would I would like to hear from Erica and Carol as to their thinking on the five hundred thousand dollar ask. I'm going to jump in for one moment, Dave. Uh, Holly, is it possible for you to uh, zoom out? on the spreadsheet that we're seeing, perhaps by eliminating or shrinking columns E through uh, I, and then enlarge it, it's, it's a bit hard for me to see. I assume it's difficult for others, certainly those in attendance. 
Is there, and I'm wondering if we can keep, we're not doing the voting right now. So if we can uh, enlarge the, sort of the left-hand portions. Can we go any larger? Seems similar to where it was. That's better from my perspective. Uh, can everyone on the committee see this? Or let me restate it. Is there anyone on the committee who would like to see this larger? Okay, I'm gonna assume that uh, we can see it. So uh, sorry to interrupt you there, Dave. Uh, if I heard you correctly, you were indicating that for the town of Amherst affordable housing development funds that you felt after discussing internally with staff and others that uh, you'd still be able to move forward in the right direction with a reduced uh, dollar amount of 150,000. Is that correct? Correct. Uh, I think it makes sense, Holly, for us perhaps to change the word recommended at the top of column K to uh, uh, draft. Uh, we're not at yet recommending it, but a draft for a draft discussion. Uh, if we could put 150,000 in call in row number six of column K. Uh, before we uh, continue further, I see that Tim has his hand up. I'd like to call on Tim. Yes, uh, while Holly is working in the spreadsheet. Uh, for my mind, we have to shave about 600,000. So I'd be interested if we could maybe add one other column after K and between K and L for what the difference is between the ask and the draft. And then that sum total of all those differences should up actually add up to 600 or so thousand. I don't know if that's easy to do, but then we could just sort of visually see how we're doing. Does that make sense? uh that's that's exactly what we did tim so okay we were and having just very said, much the same yeah and having just said that dave um uh, i'm assuming that should there if there were enough funds the town still would like to have 275 rather than 150 and if, as you go and talk about all the various town proposals I'd be interested in knowing what your opinions are on that. Uh, and it's nice that you're able to shave some off because you understand we have to shave some money off. But I'd be curious just to say after those discussions you've had with all the town officials, if you think 150 is the reasonable number, that's different than you think 275 is the regional number, but you're coming up with 150 just so you can help the committee out. Well, again, I'd, I'd love to get Erica and Carol in because these two really go together. Two and okay. three really, like, really like go together. Like they did last year. Okay, yeah. good. But, but I will say, you know, we did this with some reluctance. We know that there is a housing crisis in Amherst. There's a housing crisis in the Valley in Massachusetts, broadening it out to the state. Um, do we, do, does the trust know that they can spend you know that that they can spend 500 or the town can spend 275 we clearly can we have to be careful we have to be um proactive we have to be um you know vigilant in reviewing those proposals that come before us um 150 there is there's not a, a tremendous magic to 150 we definitely were trying to think outside the box and creatively to help the CPAC get to that number of roughly $600,000. So um, we have ARPA funds, we have some previously allocated funds uh, from, from CPAC in previous years. So we're gonna do the very best we can with 150,000 and there's no question the trust and the town will be back next year because housing is such an urgent need in town. So that's really all I wanted to say about the town's request and our reduction. And I'll leave it to Erica and Carol to speak for the trust. Uh, thank you, Dave. And thank you, Tim, for your suggestion. Uh, Tim, the concept of having some indication of the remaining um, 
gap, for lack of a better term, makes sense. We did it last year by having a uh, spreadsheet field that was the cumulative total of the uh, the ask and the recommended amounts. Um, but your comment of having the reduced amount and a total on the bottom, which I see Holly has done here, um, is also, it's not the negative, but we get the concept of what you're discussing. Uh, um, so if I understand correctly, Dave, you're indicating that you had some conversations with town staff as well as members of the Municipal Affordable Housing Trust who have some information to share with the committee related to the funding requested amount or uh, that initially was at $500,000, is that correct? Dave, Somak? Yes, and I, I see Carol and Erica in the, yep. in the audience. And I would love to Holly, them. can we uh, enable? I, I've already brought them into the room. Okay, wonderful. So um, Carol and or Erica, um, uh, thank you for uh, joining our meeting and we'd like to hear what you have to say uh, regarding your proposal uh, that might be distinct from uh, what we might have heard uh, previously. Um, well, I'll try first. Hoping... I'm having a hard time hearing you. Uh, can we do something about the volume? Yeah, is that better? That's better. I have a headphone on and I hadn't flipped the microphone down. Sorry. Um, so I, you know, we get the, we get whatever we get from you and it basically is the funding for whatever we do, for whatever the things are that come up that might have been unexpected, um, which have sometimes been getting, helping at least to get a piece of property so that it doesn't disappear from the possibility of being affordable housing. Frequently, a lot of times it has been more than someone thought they might have asked for because of uh, increases in construction costs. So the first thing I have to say is I don't really know and there isn't a way that we can know. The couple of things we do know is that some of the things that are right now in the like um, East Street, Belchertown Road, it doesn't look like construction is going to start perhaps until we get another shot at this, although there may be things that they need before construction starts. Any of the other projects um, that we are aware of, especially with the town just having dropped what it's asking for to 150, we would not be at all surprised if some of the things that were in there 275 turn out to need a little bit more than the 150 that they have now asked for. And then we will be the ones that they are likely to come to uh, when they need more. But all that said, we think that we could do with 300 instead of 500. We will just have to make it last better. Uh, so, mu so much of it is indeterminate. And I think the thing that is the biggest challenge, at least to me, is I don't want, I, I hope that 300 will be enough so that we will not, by any stretch of the imagination, have to miss therefore an opportunity to create some kind of affordable housing that we really want to see happen because as Dave has said, and as all of you know, that we're, we're in a crisis in Amherst and Am Massachusetts and kind of everywhere else. So, but in with great difficulty and talking with Dave and Polly was there and trying to figure out what in the world would make sense knowing that knowing that you probably aren't going to want to capitalize anything because you don't want all your money to be going into debt service next time, for instance, uh, we thought we could do 300. And I would like to hear what Erica wants to add. Thank you very much for listening. Erica, uh, I'd like to invite you to uh, share any thoughts you have with our, our committee. If, if you can hear us, uh, we can't hear you at the moment. Um, we, we're still not hearing any comments. I'm not sure if you have something to, to add, Erica. I assume that you do. Um, 
folks. So maybe what we can do is continue on with the discussion and then uh, if there's something you wish to, if you get your microphone working uh, to let us know. Um, I'm, I've not done the telephoning in. I'm not sure how effective that is via the Zoom meeting. Um, so, so we can't hear from Erica if she has something to say. Carol, is there anything you'd like to say at the moment before we move and then invite Erica back another time if there's something she wishes to say? Um, can you hear me? I don't, yes. I don't think I, I don't know. Okay. I don't know exactly what Erica That's was going to say. I feel like I said what I wanted to say. Thanks for the opportunity though. Okay. Thank can you, you hear me now? Hey. I just removed, now, I'm sorry folks. I just removed her and brought her back in. So hopefully it sounds like it might've worked. Great. Thank you. I'm sorry that uh, I had uh, difficulties here. Um, I don't have uh, too much more to add um, in terms of what Carol stated, but I, what I do want to say is um, when we had this discussion, we really wanted to be balanced and fair. And one of the things that we, Carol and I really appreciated was the balance between creating a really um, good quality of life uh, for those who are here already in Amherst with those who want to be part of Amherst, who you know who work in Amherst um, and can't afford to live here, uh, elders who are downsizing, who can't find affordable apartments and may need to think about moving out of Amherst. So there's a real balance of trying to maintain both um, you know, the ability to, to get pipelines down, because as you know, any development takes anywhere from, you know, three to five years to, to get uh, into the pipeline and to actually get up and running and be opened. And so, um, you know, we really appreciated the conversation last week and listening to how fair and balanced all of you are in wanting to ensure um, that we do uh, address the critical need of affordable housing, but at the same time also address the real need of ensuring um, that Amherst is uh, a, a place where quality of life is important for families and for young people and, and for elders as well. Um, so saying that, you know, we thought, you know, okay, we're willing to go with 40% reduction, knowing that we are in partnership with the town, knowing that um, this year we're really going to spend a um, very judicious amount of time in strategizing about where we can make the biggest impact. Um, without funds, it's sometimes hard to make an impact, but at the same time, there are other ways to make an impact in terms of affordable housing and to start you know, putting ourselves in a place um, to really think about how we use our funding judiciously. Um, and so, we're willing to this year um, go with 300,000, um, but as Dave and Carol said before, um, we will be back next year. Um, and hopefully we'll also be able to show you how innovative we've been this year with the funding. Um, but as you know, that there are just so many opportunities, which includes maybe subsidizing vouchers, subsidizing mortgages, um, because the, um, the housing and the rental properties here in Amherst are just really out of reach for most families, individuals, and elders who may want to downsize or may want to move in just to be with, with friends or, or community. So that's all I wanted to say, but I really wanted to appreciate the fact that all of you have been so careful and committed to ensuring that Amherst is a just and um, very good place to live. So um, we will go ahead and uh, ask for 300,000. Uh, thank you, Erica, for your uh, perseverance in uh, being able to uh, share your comments with us. And thank you for what, you, what you've said. Um, I guess it makes sense uh, then for Dave Zomack, if you have further comments related to the town submitted proposals uh, yourself and or if there's another representative from the town who you think would be uh, ready to comment on the funding request for those town proposals. Sure, I'd, I'd, it'd be great if Holly could bring in Amy Ruzecki, our Assistant Superintendent of Public Works, um, whom you all know. Uh, before we leave housing, uh, I just think, you know, it, it's really great that Carol um, 
Erica, uh, Nate Malloy and I could get together and, and discuss this. I just, you know, wanted to reiterate it. You know, there's more there's more need out there than we can we can um, certainly cover with CPA or ARPA funds. Um, but the the critical piece of these are that they can be used for pre-development. They can seed projects. You know, at three hundred and fifty to five hundred thousand dollars per unit. You know, these are these are big numbers on our CPA spreadsheet, but when it comes right down to it, that's what a per unit cost is in Massachusetts and Amherst for for an affordable unit. But the other thing I want to point out is we do appreciate, I think we all appreciate that if you look at the debt service, you know, we're still we're still investing in affordable housing. There's Belchertown Road in the third of 10 years. There's Rolling Green, which will come off at 81.6, uh, 10 of 10 uh, in the 10th year. And then there's Valley CDC's uh, project there. So, so you know, we've invested as a community. Uh, we're investing more funds through debt service as well. So we, uh, we appreciate that. But if Amy's with us, I think we can go through some of the recreation projects. I think I'd like to start with maybe some of the easier ones. I say easy, they may not be so easy, but I think I'd maybe like to end with the um, War Memorial because I think Amy has a few slides if it's possible to show those uh, in a minute. But um, uh, so Amy is in the room, that's great. Um, maybe we should start with pickleball um, because that, that was a $100,000 ask. And really, nothing has changed from last week, um, we, except this: we we are hitting the pause button on pickleball, and um, we, uh, to be honest, we'd like to withdraw the hundred thousand dollar request. Uh, we think we need more time. We need more um, time to work with with the community, both um, in East Amherst as well as in North Amherst. Um, and we think uh, the time now is is not to request this money. We will be right up front and say that, you know, the 220 that we were asking for, I want to be clear and happy to have Amy comment on this, but um, the 220 was really to build a, a three pickleball courts at Kiwanis Park, and that was a package. So it would be nice if we could just find another place in town where two, 220,000 builds you three pickleball courts. But to be honest, that is not the case. Anywhere we go, we are going to be challenged by a couple of things. One is the distance that is required, uh, the distance issue that we've we've heard a lot about and we we understand about the noise, but every site is different. So we have done some analysis of different sites in town. And um, I will be upfront, some of those costs, like at Groff Park, probably are closer to half a million dollars to build courts at uh, Groff Park. Um, and some of you may have caught in the last week, Northampton uh, is developing courts at one of their recreation areas. And I think they asked for on the in the neighborhood of $300,000 with the full expectation that they were going to come back for more. And I believe that they were in the range of um, half a million to maybe six hundred thousand. So I just put it out there that we've looked at the other the other sites in town where pickleball courts could go, and the noise uh, concerns are real, and we hear that, and uh, the cost uh, would be far exceed two hundred twenty thousand. So we're gonna we're gonna withdraw this uh, request for this year, and we may come back to you next year. Amy, happy to, if, if it's okay with Sam, if Amy wants to add anything, that's where we are. Uh, that would be fine. Uh, Amy? Yeah, I mean, Dave Dave gave a pretty good summary there. Um, yeah, I mean, the biggest thing, it's, it's not that we don't want to see pickleball. And I think, you know, we all agree we want to make this happen. But um, just, you know, the 220 was without noise mitigation, but without any other associated costs. And so it just kind of with you guys needing to tighten the belt, we we couldn't continue to ask for a hundred knowing that with an unknown location, we might have to come back and ask for more. So uh, happy to answer any questions about it at this time. Um, I don't have any questions at this time myself. Uh, 
is there anyone from the committee who has a question on what was communicated to us by Dave or Amy relating to the pickleball courts? I'm not seeing any questions. I uh, I believe the committee members are paying attention. Uh, so I think that the default means that uh, you both spoke very clearly for us to understand. Okay. So uh, thank you, Amy, uh, relating to the pickleball courts. And I see that uh, Holly has uh, made an edit in the draft dollar amounts related to that. Yeah, if I could, Sam, I just want to end our, uh, on a positive note. And Amy, Amy said very clearly, um, we all, I think we all want pickleball courts in Amherst. We all support this. I think Collectively, we, we the CPAC and the town received dozens of supportive uh, emails and letters and comments about pickleball. So we haven't given up. We're going to continue our conversations with uh, the neighbors and abutters to um, um, uh, Kiwanis. And we're also going to talk to other neighborhoods um, that abut some of our other conservation, er excuse me, recreation areas like Mill River and Groff. So we haven't given up. We're just going to regroup and see if we can come back with a stronger proposal. And again, uh, it might be more than than a, an additional hundred thousand dollar ask, and and we'll see where that goes. So that's pickleball. Uh, thank you, Dave. Uh, certainly, there was a lot of community interest in uh, having pickleball courts exist somewhere in the town. We we've heard that from the last two cycles. Thank so you. let me let me move on to cemeteries. I think we we briefly covered cemeteries um, and what staff we met with uh, again, Nate Malloy, Amy, myself. Uh, we also included uh, Alan Snow, who is our division director for uh, parks uh, and trees and also uh, covers cemeteries. And we agree that removing the fence piece of this makes sense. And we we wanted to reduce the ask there to $100,000 to do headstone restoration at the North Cemetery and the South Amherst Cemetery. Um, again, Nate Malloy is, is kind of an expert and has worked with a number of um, the best contractors to do this work and working in, you know, with the support of the Historical Commission. And it's interesting that, you know, some of these headstones, the range is quite dramatic. I mean, based on the size, the age, the damage, you know, it can be as little as $250, depending on the damage, you know, and some of them may be, you know, upwards of $3,000, depending on the size of the uh, the monument, uh, the headstone and the damage and, and how delicate they are, how thin they are, how much they weigh, et cetera. So, we're reducing that by 50,000. Uh, thank you, Dave. Does uh, anyone on the committee have any question or comment uh, related or as a follow-up to Dave's comments on the North and South cemeteries? Uh, Michelle. I just, I assume it's sort of a package deal. So if you're going to hire a contractor, it's most effective if they, and efficient, if they just do both at the same time rather than split North and South between years. That is true. There are very few qualified contractors, and Robin may certainly know more about this uh, because this is, you know, part of her area of expertise. So happy to defer to her. But what I've learned is there are very few contractors who do this the right way, and we've found a couple of those and have been using them through the years for West Cemetery. But yes, we would try to be as cost effective and efficient as possible. Bring them on. And their scope of services would include a certain number of headstones in each. I don't, we don't know that right now. Alan Snow did identify a number of areas of both cemeteries that need work, need restoration. Uh, thank you, uh, Dave. Uh, Robin, I see that your hand is raised. Yeah, I just wanted to say that actually any expertise of mine around cemeteries comes from the town working on these projects over the years. So I um, I defer to their judgment and I'd suggest uh, to anybody on the committee, if they know somebody who wants to train in, in headstone restoration, there'll be some job openings coming up soon. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, Dave, uh, I had a question on uh, the cemeteries. In, in, the, in terms of the reduction of the dollar amount, was that... Uh, was the assumption that the um, the scope of work and the proposal remains the same, or 
was it of the assumption that the town would focus on the headstones as opposed to the fence? It, it removes really the fence piece from the proposal. Uh, I think what we would try to do, and Amy, feel free to jump in here, but I believe what Alan said is he would plug away at the fence removal as time permits with his division within DPW. Um, and, and that's how we would do that. Uh, thank you. <clears throat> um, I believe there are other town proposals as well. Yes. Why don't I move on to softball? So we did hear some questions and comments about priorities on the softball proposal and the staff, again, with Alan and Amy and Nate and myself and Holly in the room, uh, we decided that we should really focus on two fields, obviously one a community field, which uh, primarily uh, uh, functions as the uh, girls varsity and junior varsity uh, softball field. Um, so we would focus on that field and the field at Groff Park, which is used extensively by adult leagues and, and Amherst Recreation. And we would, um, we would hold off uh, for this year and perhaps future years on the field at Kiwanis Park. So we were reducing that by $20,000 to $65,000. And we would apply uh, those funds uh, judiciously, uh, you know, um, to, to both those fields, getting them up to uh, a, a much better level. You may recall those fields have serious issues with the lips on the infield, uh, holes in the outfield, and of course the backstops uh, need either um, repair or replacement. I don't off the top of my head know the details of that one uh, right at this moment, but uh, Amy may know that a little better than I perhaps. So uh, we would Tim, reduce that by $20,000. Thank you. Tim, I see your hand raised. Yes, uh, I have a comment about that. And I don't, I think it would probably be better for us to comment after Dave's finished on each of these things, unless you want to have committee member comments on each project that Dave brings up. Do you have any no, thought on that? It would be fine to do it later if it's a comment uh, from- Because uh, I might have some comments about some of the other- I understand things. So I just, I think it's more efficient if we wait, if that's okay. But just for the record, I have a comment about the softball fields. Uh, that sounds great. The The only question I would, the, the only comment I would make is if a committee member has a question in terms of understanding what the communication is from town staff here. Uh, I, I would say that uh, questions relating to clarifying what the communication mm -hmm. is uh, would be appropriate at this time as opposed to comments related to the impact, et cetera. So, uh, yeah. uh, okay. Well, uh, then I do have, then I do have a question, Dave, uh, efficiencies, uh, if you're going to attend to two or three fields, is it more efficient to do all three fields or does that make no difference because they're in different parts of town? Um, in terms of the improvements, yeah, like uh, if we decide to hold on the Kiwanis field, does that mean that it's going to be a less efficient use of dollars because you have to bring in certain, I don't know, experts who handle restoration of softball fields? And while they're on site, they might as well handle the three fields rather than the two fields. And just saving $20,000 may not be a more efficient way to address that. That's my question. I think I would defer to Amy on that, if possible, Amy. Yeah. Um, yeah, no, I can answer that. So that's a good question, Dave. Um, there, there's not a huge economy of scale savings on this account. So um, yeah, you're not, it's not going to be, you know, twice the cost to have them only come in and do one field in a subsequent year. Um, okay. And, and another question, uh, the assumption is that Kiwanis Field is still in need, but maybe less of a need than the other two fields. And the only reason you're doing this is to help us out by saving 20. You'd rather do all three fields, but you're being generous and deciding to only do two. Is that fair? Yes. Okay. <laughs> um, yeah, no, I, I do. Those are questions. All right. 
let's let's move on. I just need to know the answer to that. Can, can I speak to that just for another second? Sure. Oh. Um, no, I do want to be clear that, um, you know, all three of these fields do need work. Um, and I do have concerns if we only are able to fund two of them as opposed to three of them because we do have Fort River going off this year, um, offline this year. And so all the other fields are going to get that much more use. That being said, us saying, hey, let's focus in on two instead of three, that's really an attempt to us for us to, you know, try, you know, try to give try to give a little bit so that, you know, hopefully we can still get some funding for, you know, the tennis courts and War Memorial and um, the the cemeteries and, you know, all these other projects that we equally think is are important, so. The other thing, Tim, if I could just add is that these weren't arbitrary. I mean, we looked at, you know, really they're ranked, right? They're ranked. I mean, right. community field, uh, as I said, is the varsity field, Amherst baseball, which is also Amherst baseball and Amherst softball now uses that field for girls softball. And it's it should be our best field. Groff, you know, Groff has parking. Groff has many other amenities. Kiwanis, you know, does not have as many things going for it because it's it is a quieter, less developed recreation area at this time. Um, so that was part of our, we weren't just trying to meet the funding goal, but we were prioritizing and saying, if we can only have a certain amount of money, we should put that money in the two fields that make the most sense. So um, can I move on, Sam, just? Uh, uh, yes. So um, the other uh, project that we discussed reducing is the trail restoration and enhancement. Again, I can speak to that. Aaron Jock, who is a staff member in my department, uh, one of my departments, um, put that proposal together. Again, there's clearly a hundred thousand dollars worth of um, worth of uh, trail work out there, bridge work. Um, but I, we had proposed reducing that by twenty thousand dollars as well to eighty thousand dollars. Okay. Um, with that said, um, I believe, and correct me, Holly and Amy, if I miss something. We wanted to end by talking about the rehabilitation of the area around War Memorial Pool, but I believe those were the reductions that we were coming to the table with tonight. Did I miss any? So I just want to confirm, Dave. So I, and and I, Mill River Tennis Court is going to stay at the sixty thousand. It was not going to make any changes to that particular request. That is my belief. If we'd well, like concurs. to not make any changes to that yeah, particular like request, to not make okay. any changes if Amy concurs. <laughs> That that's correct. That's there. There wasn't anything to really shave off that. That's a you either do the project in full or you you don't. Mm -hmm. uh, so uh, thank you, Dave. So far, and if I understand correctly, you had some comments related to the war memorial. Uh, Amy Amy has a very short slide deck that she because there were a lot of questions about that project. Uh, Amy put together just a couple of slides to show the group if that would help explain the 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 connection between grants, et cetera, if that would be possible. Uh, that would be helpful. There were some questions related to the uh, funding relationship to the potential for grants. So, um, uh, if you're able, Amy, uh, I'm sure the committee would appreciate, as well as any attending members or viewers uh, here. Okay. Yeah, Holly just has to promote me to a panelist to be able to share a screen. That's exactly what I was going to say. Yeah, so I, I was going to say. She <laughs> I'm not. I'm not good at this, Amy. So I think I have to remove you and then bring you back yeah. in. So let me yeah. remove you and then let me try this again as a. I'm going to steal okay. a little of Amy's thunder. We've been working, you know, we worked hard to uh, reduce some of these proposals. We are we are not proposing to reduce the War Memorial ask. So the reductions that we're coming to the table with are done uh, at this point, uh, but, but we want to stay firm at the 750 for War Memorial, and Amy is going to tell you why. There we go. All right, I am going to just show this quickly. We, um, sorry, these aren't even fancy looking or anything, but um, just kind of wanted to go through, you know, as we're looking at this project in total. So this is 
Uh, we're anticipating that this is going to be about a $2 million project total. And so it's for the bathhouse and redoing the whole area. Um, and a couple of the other recent projects, um, just to kind of give you a frame of mind of, um, you know, how we came up with this um, anticipated cost. And, uh, you know, obviously we'll firm that number up as we're um, going through the design process. But the Groff Park Splash Pad, Kendrick Park Playground, and North Common Rehab are all three projects that we've done recently, and you can see the cost there. Um, there's two grants that we're going to be actively um, going after for this. Uh, one of them is the PARC grant. Uh, it stands for Parkland Acquisition and Renovations for Communities. Um, and you can see the description of what exactly that includes, but improvement of existing parks, that's the, the portion of it that we're going after. Um, or that's kind of how we qualify for this, I should say. Uh, this is a Massachusetts specific grant. Um, the maximum award amount is um, 500,000 and they reimburse up to 70%. So it means that on a local level, we would at least need to have 250, or sorry, 215, a uh, thousand as a local match to maximize the award. Um, obviously, we saw in the last slide the project is going to cost much more than that. But um, and this is one where the application is in July, and so by you know if we want to apply for it this year, um, we're going to need to have at least two hundred and fifteen of what we're ultimately going to need in local match um, allocated at that time. Um, and, and Amherst has been successful with park grants in the past. So Kendrick Park, um, Hickory Ridge, and Mill River Pool are all examples of projects that we've gotten park grants for. The other one that we're looking at is the uh, Land and Water Conservation Fund grant. Um, and this is one that it's federally funded, but it's administered on the state level out of the, um, the Executive Office of uh, Energy and Environmental Affairs. Um, and the projects, um, you can see uh, the range of projects, but how we qualify is renovation of a park. Um, this one, it does have a maximum award of up to a million, um, and the reimbursement rate is up to 50% of that. So that would mean in order for us to qualify for a million, you know, up to a million in grant funding, we would need to have a million dollars in local match to maximize that. Um, this one, the, the application process happens right around now. So um, if we were to apply for this, we would be applying for it next January, which means, you know, around this time next year, we would need to have a um, million dollars worth of funding allocated um, to maximize that match. Um, and a couple of the past projects that have been funded that we have gotten um, for this are North Common, um, Groff Park and Puffers Pond. So we have, we do have success with both of these grants in the past. Um, and so just kind of doing the math, this is the snapshot that helped me kind of wrap my head around it is, you know, we're looking at a $2 million project. We're requesting um, $750,000. Um, potentially that gives us anywhere from 500,000 to up, you know, up to a million in grant funding, we're still going to have this remaining project cost that we're going to have to have the town either go through a capital request for it or find some other, um, you know, grant or private funding mechanism for it. Um, so I, I do put this out there just so that, you know, people understand we're not 100% um, relying on CPA. To, to fund this or to do the uh, local match, but we are hoping that it's part of what can ultimately come together, part of the many um, sources of funding that can be placed together uh, to make the War Memorial Area project happen. Uh, uh, thank you, Amy. Uh, I think the chart that we're looking at is uh, helpful uh, for me and probably others. Uh, Matt, I see you have your hand raised. Yeah, Amy. So are you saying that you only get one of park or else WCF? You, you don't get both. That That is correct. I see. Yeah, you're not uh -huh. allowed to like 
use the grant funding from one to be the match for the other. And so it's. OK, yeah. well, that was one question. That, that So that's fine. But you're also saying that you don't get both grants. Correct. You, you only get one grant or the other grant or say if you get park and then later on you get more from LWCF, then you have to return the park. It, if I could jump in, Amy, it's highly unlikely because land and water conservation or federal funds that come through the same office as the park grant, it's highly unlikely to get both. Um, I don't know if we've ever gotten both for one project. So it, it's kind of like the state, I think, looks at it as kind of like double dipping. So we've kind of got to decide which one to go for or we put in for both. But the because it comes through the same office, you, I don't know of a community you've gotten both grants for the same project. Right. OK. And uh, I, if uh, if for some reason the grants don't come through or uh, additional funding for project will need to be obtained elsewhere. Uh, is this project something that can be done in parts uh, aside from what is awarded by the CPA committee? Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, the, the big kind of driver for this project is the, um, the bathhouse that does need replacement. Um, you know, that being said, it's, looking at the whole project. So looking at kind of revitalizing the rest of the area, that's um, part of pushing that forward at the same time is it's going to make it a stronger um, application for some of these grants, um, but also, um, yeah, anyway, so it, it can be broken apart into a couple of phases if it needs to. Uh, and and you, just a, re a reminder to the committee that, you know, the committee has already funded the design of the of the bathhouse and the area around the bathhouse. And to, to answer your question, Sam, I think, yeah, there's kind of a, if once we have that design, we could incrementally develop that space. Now, we're not talking about acres and acres, acres and acres and acres. You know how big the space is around War Memorial. Um, but we could phase that in over time. But as Amy said, the bathhouse is the linchpin. That is the pivotal piece. It also, our goal is to provide um, uh, changing space and most importantly, uh, comfort stations, restrooms for those people visiting um, uh, sports events on hopefully uh, a new track and field and, and the other uh, fields at the, at the high school. Um, but we can develop the area around it in phases uh, once we have the plan. Uh, thank you, Dave. Uh, and thank you, Amy. Um, Bob, I see that your hand is up. Yeah, um, excuse my COVID lace soprano voice. Um, I, I'm a little confused about why you didn't ask for either a million or a half million just to leverage one of those grants fully. It seems like 750 is sort of this compromise number. Is that what I'm picking up? Uh, potentially. Um, but I also think, you know, even if we go after the grant that gives us half a million, um, that means that then we have to cover one and a half million um, for, you know, in, in other funding. And so the 750 was kind of a strategic, it, it allows us to have a really good local match for either option and helps us cover the bigger gap if we ultimately get the one that has the smaller grant um, on the end of it. Got it. Thanks. Yep. Um, Thank you, uh, Bob and Amy. I did see a hand up earlier, though not currently. Uh, does anyone on the committee have any questions related to understanding what was communicated uh, relating to the War Memorial Pool uh, request and uh, grant potential? Not seeing any hands. 
So great. Uh, thank you uh, for sharing that information with our committee uh, and for uh, describing the distinctions and the uh, details, portions of the details related to that. Very good. Um, Holly, could we bring back the spreadsheet of projects? Matt, I see that your hand is raised. Go ahead. Yeah, so that the discussion on the spreadsheet is a little more helpful. If Holly could, for the projects that we haven't discussed, make column K equal column J. Because. Yeah, so as soon as I get rid of this one, <laughs> stop. <laughs> Is that a staff member, Holly? Uh, no, that's um. <laughs> she could be new comfort dog in town hall. Yeah, Holly, if you use the formula and just copy the formula, it would go faster. Yeah, I know, but I just want to make sure that I'm not. That's going to change all my. I'm not changing the ones that we already. Did. They're doubling up. Glad I don't have to do spreadsheeting live in front of an audience. Yeah, I know. Isn't that great? Um, I did this at home and encountered the same situation where it my, doubled up. I wrote them in by hand. Bird method would have been a little different here, but I'm trying to. So that one was reduced. That one was reduced. That was not okay. So. I, I think that's all of them. Um, just, uh, <clears throat> excuse me. Pardon? Yeah. No, I was just going to say, just as Holly's doing that, just FYI, I added up the reductions uh, so far, add up to 613,000, and our target was about 618. <laughs> so just FYI. Yeah. So, um, Matt, your hand is still raised. Is there a follow-up comment? Yes, there's a second question. Um, so I'm wondering if we could uh, discuss the administration number and what the balance is in administration because yeah. the, the outstanding gap is 5,432. Um, so, yeah. I, I think we can discuss that one. And there's another one uh, uh, that seems to make sense as well. Um, and then the question also is confirming the committee's interest in, um, in allocating fiscal year 2024 cash reserves towards fiscal year 2025 projects or how so. Um, we certainly yeah. received, we've already assumed that. Well, uh, it's it's a factor in the uh spreadsheet. If we go to the bottom there, it's an additional item. Uh, on the on the gap now. Okay. Well, the, we're, the only way in which we're close to closing the gap is if we apply the the budget of reserve to this year's projects. I I understand. Um, <clears throat> so there's a, a number of projects we've received information from the town uh, after their thorough discussions internally, which brings it to a closer gap. I do want us to be able to talk about a few of the projects. Uh, and administrative is certainly one of them. Uh, I'd like to, there's about, uh, aside from the town input that we just received, there are some private proposals as well. Uh, two of them that I think warrant some discussion at this point in time are the ad administrative budget that uh, Matt referenced. And I also think uh, the Zion Church request for two reasons. One is the HPR requirement of $5,000? Uh, and also, is there a desire for a contingency amount given that their estimated is, estimate is based on a previous year? But let's commence with what Matt has suggested, which is to discuss the 
uh, administration fee. And a question related to that, Holly, I'm not sure if you know or not. Uh, do we know what our current uh, balance is as it relates to administrative fees? I'm uh, looking and secondly, up. do we know approximately what's apt to get usurped or uh, uh, utilized, encumbered in a, in a given uh, year cycle? So that's exactly what I'm looking at right now. So um, we actually have, and and I was going to bring this up when we got to a, a, this this point, more or less. Um, so there is currently a balance of approximately just over thirty six thousand dollars in the administrative funds portion. Um, what we are required to, and what we have to pay every year, are advertising and our um, community preservation um, coalition dues. Um, those things um, typically, I would say are around the $5,000 mark. Um, but what had happened was a couple of years back and Sam may recall this better than I, cause I was not the staff liaison at that time is that additional monies were put into the administrative fees for, um, I believe, helping with some of those uh, restrictions, historic restrictions, conservation restrictions, open space restrictions, et cetera. So that is the piece of it that I'm not really that familiar with on how much was designated for that, when will we need that, um, how much those, those costs would be. So, um, I know that Dave Z has followed as well. Dave Zomack um, has followed CPA for a while as well. So that's the piece that I'm just unclear of there. There is a lot of money right now, but I don't know how much of it um, folks think that will be used. We did, uh, Holly, uh, put money in uh, a number of cycles ago, perhaps three or four, and a portion of it was intended to be used for signage. Uh, and there, for those who may not have seen, there there are some large banners around the center town common. Uh, there used oh. to be some at the Kendrick Park, as well as uh, at the Dog Park. We have these banners that were put up uh, to call attention to the existence of CPA and the usage of funds. Uh, I believe, Dave, you can correct me if I'm incorrect here, uh, that some of the funding was used for some of the kiosks at these locations uh, as they come into existence. Kiwanis, excuse me, uh, Kendrick Park and uh, Dog Park, I believe, and possibly Groff Park. Uh, and there was discussion uh, at one point, uh, Dave, you had indicated we would uh, be adding signage to the existing references of the many of the trails that would indicate that they had been partially funded by CPA. Uh, so that was the origin of the uh, earlier dollar amounts. Um, if I misspoke, Dave Zomack, uh, please, uh, please jump in. Yes, sorry, I stepped away for one second there, but I, I think in general, you're you were you covered a lot of the ground there, Sam. Yeah. Um, I don't. Yeah, I, I'm not as up to date on on balances per se, but th those are the general categories. OK, uh, thank you. Uh, I do see hands raised by uh, I don't know the order. I think you were first, Robin. Yeah, I just had a question and it might not be answerable in this meeting. Um, it seems to me like I remember um, a historic commission meeting where there was a discussion of CPA funds for survey like that might be um, hanging out there without a specific project attached to them, but I could be remembering that completely wrong. I'm just looking at this East Amherst uh, local historic district and wondering um, if there are other funds that aren't spoken for that could go toward that. Uh, um, so, ooh. Interesting, Robin. I will have to look into. I understand what you're saying now. I was going to say no. You cannot use um, funds that were given to somebody else for something 
like we can't we can't change the purpose of the original but there were some due diligence funds i believe right. for the town of amherst but right, that's what i was thinking of yeah uh, it would have to be under historic and i don't i'll i can double check on that and maybe get okay. back to you tonight if not it would have to be in a subsequent meeting but let me take a peek i understand your question now hang on um michelle Um, yeah, so Holly mentioned um, advertisement as part of this 5K allocation, and I don't remember talking about that before, but as far as I know, it's just sort of on the town website, maybe Facebook. Is is that the signage that you were talking about, or is there actually a budget for town advertisement? So as part of the public hearing, any public hearing must be by state law advertised in a local newspaper. Okay, got it. So we have to put an advertisement. We put an advertisement in the Daily Hampshire Gazette and the Amherst Bulletin. And unfortunately those costs are getting right. increasing as with everything else. Thanks. So it's just once a year. <clears throat> um, so Matt had raised the discussion relating to the uh, administration fees, we currently have a significant balance. So I think uh, I saw that Holly, you had put a zero dollar amount in the draft, which seems appropriate. Um, I I did want to um, bring up the Zion Church, the North Church, excuse me. Um, this was another one for me uh, where I had a, an asterisk and my asterisk and me, my own thoughts on this project was the the additional expenses for HPRs. Uh, members may recall last year that we added $5,000 to each of the historic preservation uh, projects that related to uh, altering an existing building because uh, there's a requirement for that and town staff estimated that it would be five thousand dollars so i believe uh for the zion church request as it currently exists distinct from what we award or if we award for that project's work there's going to be an additional five thousand dollars for hprs if it's recommended and approved uh, and the other item affiliated with that that came to my mind related to contingencies. Um, I realize we're jumping around, uh, but I, I, it seems given our general um, ratings and gaps funding, which is close, uh, that it's, it's warranted to discuss this one because I think it's one of the ones that has a variance. Um, does anyone else have thoughts regarding the HPR expense related to the Zion Church, which I believe is 5,000 years past, and or a contingency fund? Uh, Robin. Yeah, I had the same concerns, and um, I know that the applicants, um, you know, came before us and said that they uh, had, had sought um, guidance on taking out a loan if there was a, um, a contingency issue. But I agree with you, Sam. Um, I think it would behoove, uh, behoove us to fund uh, that amount so that the project can can go forward more smoothly and not be at risk of, of running into trouble down the road. So um, yeah, those are my comments. When you say that amount, what what are you referring uh, to? Ah, sorry, whatever, I mean, whatever, I, I'm not as familiar with, you know, what an appropriate contingency amount would be, but it's, I think it merits discussion. Okay. Uh, Matt. Yeah, so regarding the contingency, um, I think that uh, the applicant last week in the questions discussed that and, um, also in the packet, we had the uh, the budget from the North Church, which was in Korean, um, but it was fairly comprehensible. I don't know if other committee members were able to review that. I did notice um, with their budget, they have it does look like they have changed their budget to specifically raise money to support this, and um, uh, they they had a twenty thousand dollars budget specifically for. Um, this plus they have also increased their um, 
their general maintenance budget, I think. Um, so uh, if I pull up the packet, um, yeah, so they've got in their expenses budget 31,118 for maintenance in addition to um, uh, 22,000 uh, in the building fund. So I think that's how, the, in addition to their option to get a loan, I think that's that's their approach. So I, I feel like they they are trying to handle the contingency themselves through their own fundraising. And also they have to increase their fundraising because they are aware as we are too that there are other maintenance issues with the building beyond just the roof. Okay, uh, Katie. Um, you know, thanks, Sam. I, I um, agree with Matt. Um, having looked at their budget, I thought the contingency, you know, they they responded to that. Um, my question is around the use of administrative. If we have thirty six thousand dollars in administrative fee, could that be, you know, five thousand dollars from there be put to use for the uh, restriction, the historic preservation restriction, as opposed to coming out of um, Polly, I guess the question is, can uh, can funds that are currently allocated and previously voted for Town of Amherst administration be, uh, for lack of a better term, returned to the pot? Well, uh, I, I wouldn't... Not return to the pot. It's whether or not preservation restriction is an appropriate administrative expense. That administra That's could a it be better, better, better way of phrasing it, Matt. <laughs> and once again... Um, I'm going to have to look into that. I believe that was a discussion that you guys had to the two or three years ago when we, in, 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 and I may be mistaken, but I believe the answer was no, but I will double check into that. I seem to recall that discussion as well, Holly. Yeah, I believe uh, the answer is no, but I will double check. And if the answer were no, if if it were not available for an HPR, can it be reallocated i guess that would be the procedural way if that's even an option the, so that's something to check i guess um so you would officially reduce your administrative costs and then add them back to the pot to is that reallocate them out is that something rescind that, that. Happen, okay uh you know a portion of it but um i guess regardless of where funding sources arrives from, it's my opinion that there's a need for a set of funds to accommodate HPR restrictions on this property. Um, and I believe it makes sense to include that in our draft amount. Um, we set up, uh, we, we utilized a dollar amount of 5,000 last year for any of these types of projects based on feedback from the town, I would recommend that we do so, but I'd like to hear what the committee thinks. Uh, Tim. I I agree with that. And my recollection is <clears throat> that uh, these restricted, the restriction funds would coming out of the general town budget, not CPA funds or past CPA administrators funds and we to take the uh burden off the town budget we elected to add for each project five thousand dollars which we started last year so i would propose this number be 182 911 i think is what your intent is which includes the five thousand dollars for the uh hbr uh i agree with that as a means of resolving for discussion purposes the issue right, right. of the <clears throat> HPR. Um, and the contingency amount is a separate discussion. We've heard from Matt and from uh, Katie on that, as well as from Robin. I, I do have a question, Holly. Uh, at present, we can see on the screen uh, the upper portion of the, or at least I can see on the screen, the projects and a portion of the debt, but I cannot see the, the implications 
of those dollar amounts in sum on the bottom. Uh, is there a field that exists on this spreadsheet that incorporates the draft dollar amounts that are referenced on column K, as well as the existing funds and balances? Can you hear me, Holly? Um, I'm sorry. What was that? No, I'm sorry. I had to step away for one second. Yes, no problem. You're you're in the hot seat. <laughs> you you're we all depend on you. So uh, I'm sorry. The, no, no, that's fine. I I appreciate very much all that you do. Uh, it makes things uh, this it makes it so helpful for us. But the question is, uh, given that we have draft. Uh, dollar amounts in column K. Uh, is there a way for us to see the implications of that column K, those changes, those draft changes, in as it relates to the available funds and uh, the existing and the debt? So in other words, lower in this spreadsheet on the left-hand side, we started out with a gap further down, probably on line number 33 or so, in row number 33 or 36, right there we had the estimated surplus and the estimated expense. So did you, am I correct that you have created a formula that incorporates everything and places it into column, the, column E, line number, row number 45, currently $432. Uh, Row number 45, column E. Yes, that's correct. So can we highlight that, please? And maybe put a shaded background of some color on it so it stands out. Could you explain to me and or others what's incorporated in that Four hundred and thirty-two dollar. Uh, I assume that's a deficit. Uh, I, I guess I'm not sure what you're what is, you're asking is, with is the that, dollar amounts that we just with the dollar amounts that we just discussed and the debt that we must pay yeah. and the using the hundred and sixty-four four hundred and sixty-three. We are short $432. So if you were to change as a high example, the estimated surplus deficit of 164 uh, a dollar, that would change a dollar as well. So uh, does the committee understand what that, that field indicates? In other words, it appears if we if we go with the draft dollar amounts in column K, we're within $432 of uh, fulfilling those dollar amounts. Is that correct, Holly? Yeah, there you go. Uh, so Holly had just, to test it out, had lowered one of the projects by $432 and it became a zero. Um, okay. Um, I think that's a helpful field as we discuss these these items. Can we scroll back up? <clears throat> and show the left-hand side, uh, correct. The, the request that one more field, column, yeah, there we go. I guess, I guess it's just column J. For some reason, column J has changed to it no longer shows the initial requested amount. It just shows what we have. There we go. Um, uh, Dave, I see that your hand is raised. Dave Zomack. Yeah, I just um, getting back to the um, the contingency for the uh, Zion Church, and I don't know if Holly can comment on this or not, but it strikes me that you know every every non town well. Every every applicant will have some sort of agreement with the town, um, particularly for that large of, of a sum. They will have a grant agreement with us, 
Um, and I don't know, Holly, in the past, if we have had something in that grant agreement about requiring those funds. You know, I think earlier somebody made a comment, which was a very good comment. You, you don't want to get three quarters of the way through this project with CPA, town CPA funds and realize, you know, you you overshot your budget and there isn't $30,000 to finish it. So I think the grant agreement can, you know, cover and require uh, those funds to be, you know, in the bank, in the house, if you will, when the project starts. And Holly, correct me if I'm off base on that, but, you know, the project... You have to have those funds to start the project. It can't be kind of aspirational. You're, you're indicating, Dave, if I hear you correctly, that there's a requirement in the agreement process with the town that there be a contingency amount? I think we can require that. If I'm not mistaken, I can check with Nate Malloy, but I think it, it's, you know, you have to have you have to have the money available because there are often, you know, cost overruns and labor overruns and whatnot. So I think Matt and others uh, spoke to, and Katie spoke to the Zion Church's budget, and they've identified those funds. But I think in our grant agreement, we can solidify that. Um, thank you. The, the reason I had brought up the contingency is my understanding is their estimate uh, was based on previous uh, time period. In other words, it was done and submitted based on numbers prior to September of this year. Um, <clears throat> so it, it it came into my mind that it could be an issue. And uh, <clears throat> they their uh, budget, which I did read, uh, and it was good to see that... Uh, uh, the church responded to the request from the committee. Um, some of those funds in their budget were to be raised. In other words, not existing funds, um, which is why I brought up the topic. Uh, Holly. So um, I'm not 100% sure on that one, Dave. That would definitely be a question for Nate Malloy, who typically works with the applicants to draft that. Um, but there, there clearly is in the contracts that it is only up to X dollars. Any cost overruns it is is very clearly borne by the applicant. There is no more. We need another thousand dollars, ten thousand dollars, twenty thousand dollars. That that's not possible without waiting a year and going through another round of CPA. That piece is certainly clear, but in terms of any matching funds, I don't, I'm not familiar with those contracts. So we would definitely want to check with Nate. Okay. Uh, Robin. So, so hypothetically, then, if we were to award the 100, and, well, it's 182 with the preservation restriction, but um, the, that award amount to the church, and they have a cost overrun that they can't cover, and we don't have anything left in reserves because we're not bonding anything. I'm. I guess my concern is with the uncertainty of all of that, we're going to be deferring this we could potentially be deferring the project another year for want of whatever that contingency is that's my only thinking that with a a situation especially i i didn't look at the budget um but um you know to not have those funds secured and locked down i mean it, it, i'm just i'm uneasy on some level <laughs> with with you know the potential for it just not to go forward again and then, you know, we have another $170,000 um, that's sitting there for the next round. But um, the church continues to face the weather. Uh, Doug. Yeah. Um, thanks, Sam. Um, you know, I had been interested in seeing their budget because I wasn't sure how strong a partner they are on keeping that building going. Mm -hmm. And um, 
you know, I guess my impression is mostly formed by driving by it and seeing how the paint is peeling off the building. And it, it just looks like it's not being maintained. So having this grant request come in for essentially 100% of a construction project made me feel like, well, if we give them 177 this year, you know, what's the next capital project that the building needs and are they gonna come back? And are we over time essentially gonna become the ones who fund the continued existence of the building? which may be what the CPAC group, you know, committee and the town want to do. Uh, I appreciate that it's a landmark building in North Amherst. Um, you know, I saw that many members of this group rated this project as a five. And, uh, you know, I'm in, I mean, I have no objection to keeping the building. Um, but I think we need to be careful about how we partner with with entities, especially if it if they are actually struggling to keep their buildings. So, uh, you know, I know once you make a grant, that's decided, and the next time it comes in, you can't think about how much money you already invested in it. That's a sunk cost. But um, I, I guess you know this may not be the only institutional entity in town that has its house poor. <laughs> um, and do we want to have a precedent of taking care of the buildings that the occupants don't have the wherewithal to support anymore? So uh, that may be a bigger question than we need to deal with tonight. Um, you know, I, I saw that we had the reserve from last year, which basically I gather was put aside for this purpose, for this church. And I have no objection to going forward with granting them this money. But I, you know, in, in light of the conversation tonight, I think it would be good for us to, to encourage applicants to bring some money to the table, to show us a project budget that has a significant amount that is funded by the applicant and not 100% by us. Thank you. Thank you, Doug. Uh, Robin? Um, I think I, I agree pretty much with Doug on everything there. The only thing that I would add um, to the conversation is, um, is the issue that with the type of damage in particular right now the, with the building um, and having owned a a historic home previously to the one that I lived in now and been a little bit over <laughs> moved because I couldn't afford to um that sort of upkeep. The issue right the issue before us is that there's damage that is at risk of further damage and the further historic structure is damaged, the more potential it is to be lost forever. So um I think the the the, the peeling paint is um not as as uh frightening of an issue going forward and something that you know could essentially be deferred down the line but this particular um particular i wouldn't even call it maintenance um, um repair is critical to prevent further um destruction of of a really significant building and so that's kind of where my support comes from thank you robin uh katie Thanks, Sam. Um, and I, I too agree, Doug, with <clears throat> your concerns and comments. It is a risk. Um, and I would say that having been on the committee last year and seeing this progress, I feel that the um, Zion Church has shown really good faith and a lot of progress in response to our questions. And in terms of having zero uh, contingency and sort of zero building maintenance and is really building that forward, which I think the process has inspired. And I do think um, those that need funding most um, can be risky and yet 
that, you know, we sort of are here to, I think, serve those who need that need it and potentially create some momentum um, for them uh, in fundraising and sort of future maintenance. Um, and to, I think to Robin's point, you know, sort of like stopping the further deterioration is a great first step and um, certainly wouldn't harm things um, in terms of the building and, you know, whatever future it has, it may not be Zion Church, but hopefully it would be beginning to preserve that building for many more years to come, no matter who is, who owns it. So I would just add though, you know, I, it is a risk. Um, I have seen a lot of demonstrated good faith and progress in their approach to this and feels like a great partnership in the questions that we've asked and in their response and in the work that they've done um, to move things forward. So I just wanted to add that in. Thank you, Katie. Uh, Dave Zomack. Yeah, I just want to say, I think this is a great conversation. I, I, I um, fully understand and agree with many of the points that uh, Doug made a few minutes ago. I think staff has talked about many of them. I just, we don't probably want to go into this level of detail, but I, in the future, I do think that the CPAC and staff and working with the Historical Commission, we want to have these kind of deeper conversations around kind of direction and maybe even as far as policy on um, how far we we can go and how much we can invest in essentially these private structures. Uh, you know, moments ago, you know, you were talking about the house on uh, on um, uh, Northampton Road. Um, you know, I I think this is a very significant structure in North Amherst. But the question is, you know, one, it is a house of worship at, at this time. Uh, we've invested in other houses of worship in town as recently as the South Amherst Church, uh, the JCA down on um, uh, Main Street. Um, but other communities have actually put dollar amount limits on what they do invest in private structures of all kinds. So, um, you know, I think the Historical Commission has had some preliminary conversations on that. And and it's it, I think it'd be a fruitful conversation to have in the future. I'm not saying it, it's now is the time, but um, I think there are a lot of questions about this. I will investigate with Nate just whether we can, um, you know, there has to be some guarantee that contingency funds are available if needed. Um, you know, these funds, if the town count, if you recommend this to town council, town council votes in favor of the, this funding, these funds, uh, they wouldn't be available until July 1st of 24. And to Sam's point earlier, they're that's a long time to wait and costs may rise at the, you know, when they go to bid this job. So if all of that, uh, uh, you know, falls into place. So they are going to likely need some funds in hand to move this forward. And there may be a way for us to put that in their, uh, their uh, uh, grant agreement with the town. So I think in the future, we do want to have a conversation about, about uh, how much, the town can invest in private structures of all kinds. Thanks. Katie. Yeah, sorry. I Dave, uh that policy conversation does need to happen. We were talking about that earlier. And I think that absolutely, you know, but we can't make our decisions now on something we haven't yet done, right? And you agree with that. So I do think that has to happen. Um, I do want to go on record that I love the idea of contingencies because I think it does help mitigate risk. And we have done that in the past, and I think we certainly can do that with this. Um, we do have 164,000 that could be used this year, um, potentially because it's in the reserves. So, you know, we could have some flexibility to get that work moving potentially um, with the remainder coming in the next year. Um, that might also help with contingency, just another option. I do like the idea of having, and want to go on record of having a, um, you know, you. contingent on having some additional funds raised and in hand. Uh, thank you, Katie. Uh, for for the discussion purposes, I raised the Zion Church because of the uh, issues that we're discussing. I think it's one of the few projects that has that issue. Uh, I 
broached the question to the committee of what do committee members think about increasing the requested dollar amount uh, to cover a portion of potential contingencies? Um, I've, in terms of that response, uh, distinct from financial viability and distinct from anything that would be potentially written into any agreements, uh, the question uh, which seems to make sense to pose to committee is what thoughts do committee members have on the requested dollar amount uh, of 177 uh, plus the HPR of, of the uh, committee considering a higher dollar amount if they were in favor of it. Um, I've heard, we heard, I believe from Matt and um, Katie indicating that they address, that might be addressed by their budget uh, that they responded to. I'm wondering if other committee members have any thoughts specific to uh, the 177 9-11 request and any implications of a uh, contingencies related to that. Um, I see, uh, Robin, your hand was here first. Uh, Bob, I see you. Um, 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 excuse um, me, Bob, uh, Robin first. Oh, sorry. That's okay. Um, yeah, I, I think I would just like confirmation one way or another. Um, with a clear understanding with the church that either they do have the funds or or I would be in favor of voting for an appropriate contingency amount with CPA funds um, if there was support for that. Um, my concern is just that this session will close and they'll get stuck and the project won't go forward. Yeah. Uh, Bob. Yeah, thanks, Sam. Um, I'm of I'm of two minds, I guess, to the previous points about their fundraising capacity and budgeting um, skin in the game, if you will. It might make sense just to fund the lower amount and let them, um, I guess, flex their fundraising or budget muscles, come up with the other amount just as sort of a uh, a starter uh, exercise. Uh, thank you. Uh, I'm searching on the list here. Uh, Doug. Yeah, I would. I feel pretty much the way Paul does. I would fund what they asked and rely on them to make the project a success. Uh, thank you, Doug. Um, other comments? One moment. Uh, Dave Zomack. Um, yeah, I just wanted to add, I, and I know that Nate Malloy is in another meeting. He's meeting with the Housing Trust right now, and we were just uh, exchanging information, and he did confirm that um, we can put in um, a condition in the contract agreement. Uh, typically, we have a condition that the agreement that the entire project budget is documented before CPA funds are released and could, could include a percent of contingency. And um, I just wanted to go back um, to something Doug said a few minutes ago um, that I agree with, which is, and, and, and Bob said it a different way, which is, you know, I do think applicants need to have some skin in the game. And, and it is, I don't know if it's unprecedented, but I'd say it's a very unusual for CPAC to fund 100% of a project, including the contingency. We don't even know what the contingency is at this point because this work hasn't been bid out. But I, I do think CPAC, uh, your committee in the past has incentivized applicants to try to go for other funding, private grants. I mean, you know, you've, You've been very clear, even with the town, find other monies to match these funds. So I just would caution a little bit uh, to, to take that out of this proposal. Um, the Zion Church didn't ask for the contingency. Um, they asked for 177,911. Mm -hmm. And so 
that's just my advice to the committee is stay at that number and uh you know the town staff will work with them to create a grant agreement that um builds in the contingency and what that will be is anybody's guess once this is bid out in sometime in the late summer probably of 24. uh michelle sorry holly you probably have something more for more formative oh, to say um I didn't see Holly. I'm sorry. I'll just sneak in. So they, so that twenty one thousand, I think, is what they showed in their new budget for their new building um, costs. So I don't, I wasn't clear when that money is available, like what their fiscal year is, and if it would um, mesh well with the grant agreements that Dave is talking about. But that's at least ten percent contingency, but not adjusting for any kind of inflation. So if that was meant to represent it, it seems like they might have that on hand. That's all. Uh, thank you, Michelle. Holly? Um, I, I'm, I'm not even 100% sure that I should say this the way I'm going to say it, but every project out here could possibly run over budget. I think it's a, I, I'm not sure that it's a good practice to anticipate other people's needs and and fund for things that they're not even asking for at this point and and that may not be the best way i i'm not i guess i'm just not sure how to say that there's there's a lot of projects out here that people have asked for that they're basing on costs right now when it comes down to it they may be short as well so is that a practice we want to get into uh, maybe is a better way of asking that question. Thank you. Holly, uh, can you let Tim Neal back into the meeting? He's he's an attendee uh, at present and he must have gotten disconnected. Um, and Absolutely. it may be that Tim has something to say on this as well. Uh, I'm going to see if we can get him back in here. He is back in. Uh, if your hand was raised to say something, Tim, please raise it again. Robin, I see that your hand is raised. Yeah, oh. I just. Oh, sorry. That's okay. I just wanted to. Um. Uh, I I appreciate the direction from everyone. I'm not really as familiar with this aspect of things. I I I think part of my reasoning was that I felt like a year ago or two years ago, maybe. Um. I remember somebody's uh, project amount being increased by us, but that might be just faulty memory on my part. So I appreciate all the direction from everybody. And and I, I pretty much agree with all the reasoning that's going on. Thank you. So um, there, there are lots of projects here. I see you, Tim. And we've made, uh, we have not talked about all of them, but we have received uh, budget draft uh, amounts that bring us closer to a potential funding solution. Uh, can you share again, Holly, with the current draft amounts where we're at in terms of gaps? So above here, ugh. So here we have saved the $618,000. Our um, gap was 618,432. So we are within $432 being able to. That's inclusive of the fiscal year 24 budgeted reserve, is that correct? That includes the budgeted reserve. This is the deficit if we do not use the budgeted reserve. Uh, so in which case we'd have to. Okay. I, I see your hand, Tim. Um, the reason I'm bringing that up, it's currently close to 815. Um, and it seems to me uh, that it may make sense for us to get a couple of responses to some inquiries regarding administration funds uh, and then come back next week to uh, I guess conclude our 
discussions and deliberations, or at least hopefully do so on a project by project basis. I bring this up because I recall last year, uh, we had a meeting that extended for a good duration and uh, concentration started to wane among uh, participants, which may not be desirable when we're talking about uh, significant funds. Um, that's my mindset at the moment. Uh, Tim, I'd like to call on you, please. Yeah, so uh, yes, I somehow I got disconnected and I couldn't get back to speak. <laughs> uh, but I agree with the previous comments regarding uh, contingencies. My feeling is we shouldn't guess that the applicant's numbers are wrong and, and us add them, add to it just because we think they may have miscalculated it. I agree with Holly that many of these projects, when the rubber hits the road, they may not meet the original applicant request. So that's my opinion on that one. As for the further projects, Sam, I do think uh, even though we, in effect, re reached our targets, we do and should talk about each one. I think we got a sense last week that we were going three hours, and I, for one, would prefer to keep going rather than wait till next week. Uh, so that's my opinion on that one. I'm fine with going, depending on the committee. Um, let me ask it this way. Are there committee members who... Uh, would not wish to continue at this time uh, and rather uh, meet again next time. Uh, Michelle. Normally I'm up for a late night, but last night was a late, late concom meeting and I really want to put my kids to bed tonight. So that's just my my personal two cents on that. So I'm uh, happy Bob. to continue. I am in the throes of COVID, so I'm not going to volunteer to keep going. Uh, Katie. Well, those are two very good reasons not to keep going, but I, I'm not sure I, I don't, I'm not available next week um, until after seven, maybe closer to seven 30. So um, I'm just concerned about that. Okay. Um, we had scheduled our time from six to eight for today, although I thought it might go longer than that. Uh, I don't have a problem continuing. I'm not certain that we would, conclude discussions on all of the proposals, as well as uh, conclude voting on all of the proposals. Uh, it seems like a lot to do in the next 45 minutes. Um, and why don't, why don't we continue for another 15 minutes, which is what I had referenced uh, the other week that we might go to 830, even though it was listed as eight and, and see where we where we are. Um, <clears throat> um, Tim, your hand is still raised. Is that? Yeah, I just was going to make a quick suggestion. Uh, I think it would be helpful for us to have dollar amounts or proposed new dollar amounts. And my request is if we could just quickly, if anyone has a uh, proposed suggested lower amount for those projects that are already on the table, just to introduce that. If everybody thinks the projects on the table are okay with the dollar amounts listed, then we can just have more substantive discussion next week. Uh, that would be that would be a time saver sort of alternative. Michelle? I saw um, an email from the Mill River project about some additional match they were providing. Does that just fill the match they had previously provided or is that potentially a reduction in the cost they need my, in total? My understanding, Michelle, is that their application referenced their intent to okay. raise that money and they were providing a progress report to us to indicate that they are on track for what they expected and assuming that they were successful that they would still have this request in other words they lowered their requested amount to 46 that 46875 on the hope and assumption that they would meet that and so they're letting us know that it's going well so it would not impact their request based on my reading of what they they referenced um um well, Tim, you, you had the suggestion, does anyone have any discussions on particular uh, dollar amounts that they might wish to lower? 
we have $432 difference. I don't think we need to worry about that amount at this moment. Um, we may or may not be able to, you know, <clears throat> we don't, we have not allocated any from uh, Town of Amherst administration, so we can, could not take anything from there. Uh, I guess a, a question, if we're going to continue this evening, one that would be pertinent uh, is this. Uh, on the assumption that we were to approve dollar amounts, whatever they might be for all of the listed proposals here in column K with some variations, um, do any committee members have an issue <clears throat> uh, or how would the committee members wish to um, allocate the fiscal year 2024 uh, uh, <clears throat> balance? <clears throat> we had set aside and Matt raised the point that these numbers that we're talking about assume the inclusion of the 164,000 that's currently set aside as a reserve, a budgeted reserve for fiscal year 2024. We're discussing fiscal year 2025 projects right now. Uh, so um, does anyone have an issue or comments related to the allocation and inclusion of fiscal year 2024 budgeted funds uh, uh, to, to meet the need? Uh, we have assumed it essentially in our discussions here, uh, and the only proposal, the, the, the amount was set aside uh, for the purposes or the intent of providing flexibility for the tabled Zion Church proposal from last year. Uh, so I'd like to call on members if they have thoughts or comments on the question I posed. Uh, Doug. I support allocating the fiscal year 2024 reserve in majority support of the uh, proposal from the Amherst Zion Church. Uh, Bob? Uh, I, I do too, but I, I guess I had a question. Is this what we usually do at CPAC? Do we usually allocate the reserves to the following fiscal year? Uh, during my time on the committee, there hasn't been a standard. Uh, early on, we had significant budgeted uh, reserves, which carried over, depending on the volume of requests. Uh, we've utilized them at times for in fiscal year needs. If something came up in fiscal year 2024, that means between now and next June 30th, um, we might uh, allocate them. Uh, there are other years where we've, in fact, last year we appropriated or moved a large portion of our reserves. We had 500,000 in reserves. We moved the majority of it uh, into last year's cycle to accommodate the requests. So there, there's been no standard during my time. The, the funds exist for CPA to determine um, how to recommend them. And we would, any recommendations we make go to the town council, uh, which, excuse me, go to the finance committee and then to the town council. Uh, Tim. Yeah, I, I don't think uh, by default, we have already allocated those funds by moving them into 2025 to get to our 632. If we haven't, we're off by uh, 625, I mean, the 100 and whatever it is, the 100 and... Uh, the reserves, 164,000. So uh, my opinion is if we really want to hold them in case there's something unusual that comes up before this year, we're going to have to increase our fiscal 25 budget uh, a little bit more. So I've, I'm concerned about that. Uh, Meaning we'd have to reduce other projects more. Yes, we'd have to reduce other projects. If instead we feel we don't want to spend those reserves either this year or next year, but instead use them for, or, or hold off on those, I, but instead use them for projects. I would support uh, assigning it to the North Church uh, because of the immediacy, they could get that roof repaired sooner than later. Uh, Katie. Yeah, I, I'm in favor of what Doug 
suggested um, using all the reserves and directing it to the Amherst Zion Church? Um, using them as a component of fiscal year 2025? No, I, I would I would um, suggest since this was a holdover from last year um, to provide them in this current fiscal year because we're allowed to do that. It, uh, Holly, are you still with us? Are you still, uh, where are you? I am for another moment or two. Um, I'm going to have to leave very shortly, but yes. We'll go till 8.30. So uh, Holly, uh, I had asked this the previous week. Um, if fiscal year 2024 budgeted reserve funds are not are allocated to fiscal year 2025, that's a component of our regular cycle. Correct. If they were desired to be utilized specifically for the Zion Church in fiscal year 2024, would that not be a different process with the Finance Committee and Town Council? That would be absolutely would be a separate process. You would have to do a um, a report. You would have to go before the finance committee. You would have to go before town council, and it would need to be approved and voted in this year. Yeah, um, that's what I thought. Uh, my my own opinion, as one of the many uh, committee members here, would be that uh, although I I like the idea of having some work commence earlier, I like the uh, uh, given the variables of, given that it's already December and that funds would not become available, I don't believe, until things go through finance and town council, which last year took until uh, February. Um, June 30th and July 1st come around fairly quickly. Uh, my own thought would be it may make sense to just keep everything in the fiscal year 2025 cycle. Yeah, uh, Sam, I retract that knowing now that I, I misunderstood okay. the way that the reserves could be used. So I, I agree with you. Is, is there anyone, let me phrase the question the other way. Is there anyone on the committee who, uh, and I don't believe there is, but I like to, it's warranted to discuss. Does anyone have an issue of spending fiscal year 2024 reserves to meet fiscal year 2025 uh, proposal funding needs, which is what we've been discussing on this uh, spreadsheet. I'm seeing no one. So, uh, Holly, if I understand correctly, it's uh, you're going to have to depart shortly. Is that correct? Yes. Now, we as a committee had allocated our time through uh, uh, eight. Or I need to step away for a little bit. I could be back, but I, 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 I have to. I, I, don't, shortly. I don't see us completing this this evening, uh, which to me means I think we should uh, return um, next week. And Katie, I heard you, but I also heard from Bob and from Michelle. Uh, I'm hesitant to extend us beyond what we had uh, referenced in advance for committee members. Um, uh, just because, uh, you know, it may take us a little bit more time than we think. And although I would be uh, able to do so, uh, I think it makes sense to have a, a attentive committee as well who's able to be here. Um, I believe we've made significant progress based on the input from the town in particular. Uh, in terms of the challenge that was before us. Uh, and the remaining question questions <clears throat> are any unique discussions and Tim raised the point. Um, you know, is there any is there anyone who wants to reduce it? Although we might be able to just go through everything quickly at this point, I, I think it probably makes sense to meet for a little while next week instead. Um, I'm seeing nods from committee members. Um, I'm going to go ahead. I'll, I'll call on the people that raised their hands. Uh, Tim, I think you were first. Yeah, well, what, go ahead, Doug. I just have a proposal or a, a motion, but I'll do that in a second. 
All right. Well, I heard one member, I can't remember exactly who, said she was not available until seven o'clock next week. And it just suggested to me that if we're going to meet next week, that we start at seven. Good suggestion. Uh, Tim? Uh, I hadn't thought of that, but I 100% agree with that. Uh, what I was going to do is make a proposal, a formal motion regarding the 2024 or fiscal 24 reserves. But I see Katie has her hand up. Why don't... Yeah, Tim, sorry. I, I just want to say that I'm happy to um, accommodate whatever needs. I think we should move forward with meeting next week. And I can either I can provide my my. Um, my input to Sam ahead of time or um, join in whenever I can. Seven would be better than 7.30 for you, uh, than six, excuse me, next week. Uh, I think any votes have to be a voice vote in person. I'm not sure about that, uh, Katie. Um, uh, I hear you, uh, Tim. Um, so so here's my, here is my um, motion. Uh, I don't feel comfortable with us including the 124 without officially doing it. So I am going to make a motion that this committee officially uh, allocate the current fiscal 24 reserves of uh, 164,463 to use in the fiscal 25 budget requests. I will second that. Um, prior to opening it to discussion, is that the correct phraseology, Holly, for placing reserves into, uh, is there a technical term, in other words, a financial term for uh, placing budgeted reserves funds into the subsequent fiscal year? I think Holly is. Uh... Um, I, I, don't know of any technical terms, no. So as long as your intent is clear that you are going to use the, you could say you were going to reallocate the FY24 budgeted reserve to FY25, I think that's sufficient. Okay. Um, we have a motion and a second. Uh, is there any discussion from committee members on the motion? I guess I would raise the discussion, which is, does anyone have an issue with it, which is essentially what's being asked by the motion? <laughs> I'm not hearing or seeing any hands raised from committee members. The motion on the floor is to uh, reallocate the fiscal year 2024 budgeted reserves, the full amount, which is $164,000 and some hundreds, I believe it was 500, uh, to fiscal year 2025 for inclusion in the uh, fiscal year 2025 funding of proposals. Um, without any seeing any further discussion, I'll call a vote. Uh, Tim. Aye. Matt. Aye. Katie. Aye. Bob. Aye. David Williams. Aye. Uh, Robin. Aye. Doug. Aye. Michelle. Couldn't hear you. Aye. Uh, I will vote aye as well. Uh, did I miss anyone? So the motion passes nine in favor, uh, zero. Uh, opposed zero abstentions. Uh, I believe, uh, so here's a separate question. Uh, would the committee members uh, be available to meet next week at 7 p.m. on Thursday, the 21st, as opposed to 6 p.m.? And I guess that's a question for you as well, Holly. Uh, 
we could also go 6.30, 6.30 p.m. to shave the difference. I thought it was a good suggestion. Um, does anyone have any uh, comments or opinions on the matter? Doug? No objection. Uh, Holly, are you available next week at 7 p.m.? Yes, I can be available. Okay. Uh, I'm not seeing any objections from committee members. Uh, my inclination is to uh, schedule the meeting next week a little bit later. Uh, it's apt to be a shorter meeting given the progress that we've made today. Um, so I'll just pose it one more time. Does anyone here have any objections to our meeting next week at 7 p.m. as opposed to 6? If you do, raise your hand or speak up, whether it be availability or other issues. <clears throat> uh, okay, so uh, that will be the game plan. Uh, I think this has been a good meeting. Uh, I think the input from applicants and town staff has been, uh, as it was last year, very helpful. And I'd like to uh, thank Matt retroactively again for positing that question last week about soliciting feedback, as well as Tim soliciting feedback from the applicants. Um, I don't, the, the only, uh, well, if we're gonna meet next week, I can ask it next week. So I don't have any topics that I did not anticipate 48 hours before the meeting. And the intent next week will be to hopefully conclude with our, our voting on recommendations for the um, fiscal year 2025 applications. So I am going to adjourn the meeting uh, without hearing any objections at 8.35 p.m. And uh, we'll see everyone uh, next week. Thank you all. Thanks, Sam. Take Great. care. Thank Thanks, Sam. Thanks Thank very you. much. Wow. Thank you all. Okay.